Hello and welcome back to the Cupcake Gemma channel with me, Gemma. Now, I don't know if you saw a few weeks ago, we went to visit a really great bakery in London, Buns From Home, to see a one day only exclusive collab with the amazing Matt Adlard, who is here with me in the studio. We hey! Love, we just love him so much. We thought you guys, you guys need to hang out with him a little bit more. How are you doing, Matt? Very well. Very excited to be here. It's yeah. cool to see it from video to be here in real life. It's all right, isn't it, in real mm, life? Very, it's a lot nicer in real life, I'm joking. Big, it, oh. <laughs> Your collab with Buns From Home was spectacular. It was so, it was really summery, it was strawberries, it was pistachio, it was delicious. And that was all in aid of your book. The new book, yeah. Which has recently been released into the world. Yes, I've got myself my baby. a coffee, we've got a coffee up there. Oh, look at um, them together, look it's at that. fantastic. So we thought we would do a bake from Bake It Better. I have chosen the chocolate brownie fingers. Can you tell us about that? Yes, yeah, so this is a crinkle top brownie with chocolate chunks, it's fudgy underneath. You dip it in a chocolate glaze and then we finish it with a piped whipped ganache, which I'm going to teach you all about. Oh, whipped ganache. A whipped a ganache, which <laughs> I actually, I use the French name later on so that we sound fancy. While What's the French name? Okay, so the French name is a ganache monté. We make ganache loads here at Crumbs and Doilies and on the videos, but we've never made it with gelatin. So why do you do that? So this is something that took me years, as a self-taught pastry chef, something that took me years to discover. And I saw people piping ganache and it would always be so smooth and stable and the the secret is just ganache monté, which is, is gelatin. And essentially what the gelatin does is it stabilizes it. So when you're working with traditional ganache, uh, it can be beautiful to work with, but it can be quite unstable if it gets overworked or it's too hot or it's too cold. And so it can put you into a bit of a panic because you don't know what to do when it's seized. So the gelatin stabilizes it and it makes it a lot easier to pipe. So let's say you're piping 20, 30, 40 brownies. It's gonna consistently hold its shape and its texture. And it's also gonna be a lot softer because we've got a higher kind of cream to chocolate ratio than you'd usually have. Have you, oh. ever, <laughs> have you ever tried to do it with um, a vegan alternative, like agar, agar, or? No, so that's a really common question. People say, oh, can I just use agar as a swap? And it isn't, because of the way agar has to be activated, it isn't, a one-to-one -one swap, so I haven't actually done it. We're using powdered gelatin today, but uh, it's three grams of powdered gelatin, but you can also use just one sheet of gelatin, leaf, leaf gelatin. Yeah. So any leaf gelatin, doesn't matter what the grade is, because it's all converted. So we're going to start, yeah, with the gelatin, and all we're going to do is we're going to bloom it. So we've got three grams of gelatin, and we've got 18 grams of water. Now that sounds really specific, and it is specific for a reason, because crazy. Uh, when you're working with gelatin, it's always a six to one ratio. So it's six parts water, one part gelatin. Oh, okay. So any gelatin amount you're using, I just timed it by six. So we're going to stir that together, and we're going to leave it for about five minutes. And what you'll see is that kind of thickens up and almost goes like a really firm jelly. It goes like and a fruit pastel. Yeah. If you yeah. know what that is. It goes quite <laughs> almost like dry and crispy on top, but yeah. then, yeah, so it will absorb all that moisture. If you are using leaf gelatin, just put it in ice cold water, let it soak, and then you can squeeze up all the water later on and we'll put that in the cream. Then we go on to the chocolate. So, right. bain marie, we're gonna get it on a, a medium low heat just so it's nice and steamy. We're gonna take some dark chocolate here, so we're going 70% cocoa solids. We're gonna place it onto that steaming water and we'll just stir it occasionally until it's fully melted and looks something like this. Once it's done, you're just gonna set it to one side, so we'll just put that there. Can you nurse that for me? I sure can. Okay, don't mess that up. <laughs> and we're gonna come to the cream part. Now, what I will say about this ganache is this is kind of a base recipe. So I don't add any sugar into this, so it's quite dark and quite decadent, but you can add a little bit of sugar into the cream, but you can also use this cream as like a base of a canvas of flavors, I like to call it. So think of orange zest, you could put tea bags in there, you could put coffee beans in there. You can infuse that cream and use it as your canvas to then pour over your chocolate. Okay, oh, so chocolate this is- orange would be nice. This, oh yeah. yeah, I was gonna sneakily do that actually. When I was I prepping, I was like, I might sneak in a little orange there, so not tell them. <laughs> uh, so use this as your canvas of flavor, get creative with those flavors, whatever you like, uh, and just infuse that into the chocolate there. So double or heavy cream, it's quite a lot. And we're gonna pour that into the pan. And again, just bring this to a gentle simmer so that it's steamy, but not boiling. So we are steamy now. And Damn we're right, gonna yeah. come <laughs> we're gonna come back to our gelatin. So you remember earlier when I poured the water in, it was very liquid. So if I just swell this, it's all absorbed, okay? So there's nothing that's gonna spill everywhere. So nice. that means that your gelatin is hydrated. That is the word that we're bloomed. gonna use. Bloomed, yeah, bloomed, there we go. And we just take that and we scoop it in. Bloop. Bloop. 
and just mm. stir it through and the hot cream will dissolve it immediately. Okay, so don't worry about lumps of gelatin. People get very scared of like lumps of gelatin going into a cream. So just stir that through, it will dissolve nice and easy. And like I said, if you're using leaf gelatin, just squeeze that out of the bowl, drop it in again, that will dissolve in the hot cream. So we're gonna pour the hot cream slowly into the middle and Gemma's gonna do very small kind of circles to create an emulsion. Now initially, it's gonna look quite split and probably oily and grainy and you'll think, oh my goodness, what is he teaching us? Because it's totally wrong. But trust me, we're gonna fix it. You can see we've come from that oily, messy chocolate ganache and now we can just pour the rest of this That's in. So nice. This is unlike any ganache I've ever made. Right, so take your hand blender. We're gonna give it a little blend. very liquid but that is absolutely fine the gelatin is gonna thicken it in the fridge you'll see when we come back it really thickens up and because we've got chocolate in there which has a lot of cocoa solids again that's gonna thicken up so you want to take I've got kind of two hacks for you because ideally with gelatin anything you use with gelatin like this whipped ganache ganache monte you want it to sit in the fridge overnight because gelatin needs really kind of 12 24 hours to fully hydrate as they would tell mm. you in the in the patient world but I don't have time for that okay so ideally you take as Big of tray as big as of the big as, a, as big of the tray as possible. As big as of a tray as possible. As a buzzer, as a buzzer. <laughs> You're gonna pour this out onto a cling film line tray, then put another sheet of cling film on top and put it in the fridge. In probably about two hours, because you've expanded that surface area, it will chill very quickly. And so within two or three hours, it will be ready to whip. One of the things about your brownies is it's very different to ours in that it has a higher ratio of chocolate. You've got brown sugar, mm -hmm. a high, like quite a high quantity of brown yeah. sugar compared to white sugar. Are you sling an old, an extra egg yolk in yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So talk, talk to me, talk so to me. So the, I test a lot of brownies for the book mm. and you know, it's, it's like cookies, you know, there's so many different variations. So it's just kind of playing around with quantities until like one worked. Yeah. If you're looking for that really fudgy brownie, uh, this is the, the brown sugar is the key. And what I find really interesting about this brownie is when you, you'll see the batter, it's almost like a chocolate mousse. Like it's a very moussey texture. You don't use any raising agent, do you? No, so because you're whipping so much air into the eggs and the sugar, you get this almost like meringue-like texture on top, very thin, crispy meringue-like texture. And then underneath, Honestly, when you eat it, you'll be like, this it's a, it's a texture of a brownie I've never really had before, and I, it's the texture I really love. We're gonna start by melting chocolate and butter, and this is the only part of the recipe that really is quite crucial, because what we're gonna do, we add the chocolate in, we add the butter on top, and we melt it until it's all well melted. And the key is the temperature here. So once you have melted this down, just stir it all together and then set it to one side for about 10 minutes. And what ideally you're looking for is a temperature about 35 degrees Celsius. The thing is when I was doing this, I was testing it in winter. So I said in the book, like 10 minutes to cool, like no problem. And then I started making them again in the summer and obviously it took so much longer to cool yeah. because it was so hot in the room. So just, that's an extra nugget that's not in the book. We're very close to temperature on the chocolate now. So it's about, kind of like 37. So by the time we whisk the eggs, it will have cooled down to the right temperature, ready to pour in. So we've got eggs an egg yolk. We're gonna add that into our stand mixer. Oh, I should also say that all the quantities for this recipe are gonna be in the description box below, but you can also see them in Matt's book. Yes, yes. <laughs> so eggs, uh, white sugar, and then this is the hygroscopic brown sugar. So this is what's going to give us that nice fudgy brownie. So we go in with the brown sugar and we're going to whisk this for four minutes. You're looking for this to be thick, pale and fluffy. If you drizzle it from the whisk, it should kind of hold a, what do we say in baking? Ribbon. Like a figure eight, like a ribbon, like a figure eight, you should be able to draw a figure eight. Uh, that's what's going to give us that almost meringue like texture on the top of the brownie. So make sure you give it the time that it deserves to get to that texture. This is on <laughs> medium speed. We whisk it in just, just a slow drizzle. All right. Yeah, a slow drizzle. And you'll see it just pull together. Oh, just the perfect drizzle. She's done this before. This is not my first rodeo. This is not my first drizzle. Okay, that's kind of that's kind of it. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna take this off the mixer. Yeah. You're gonna do some sieving for me. Oh gosh, so I think I can do that. If you can <laughs> sieve together the flour, the cocoa mm -hmm. powder. And we'll just add this. We could, do you sieve salt? I probably not. I always sieve, sieve my salt. Do you? Okay, all right, we'll sieve. Because it. I think it helps to mix it through a little bit. I'm in your house. Don't muck about with us. Wow, our this whisks. is a weapon. Right. Rainbow. Got it. I saved. So then we just take the dry, 
and some people fold it through. I think I'm just gonna whisk it because sometimes I find it difficult to get to the bottom of the bowl if I'm using, I hear a, using a uh, spatula. So just take your whisk, and again, we don't want to overbeat this, really reaching to the bottom of the bowl until all of that dry has disappeared. This is a nine inch by nine inch, right? As you can see, I've overlapped. Like we do have a loose bottom tin, so it's actually quite easy for us to get this out. But if you don't have a loose bottom tin, always make sure you have an overlap of your baking um, paper. Oh, look at that. So we just pour the brownie batter into the tin. All right, and we'll get it to the edges. Yeah. Give it a little spread. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. The final addition, mm -hmm. and this is optional, is chocolate chunks. Mm -hmm. So rather than chocolate chips, I use chocolate chunks because baking chocolate... There a difference? There's a lot of chunkage going on. A, baking chocolate chunks tend to hold their texture more in the oven so they don't ah. melt as easily as like a chocolate chip. Uh, so when you bite into the brownie, you get a little bit of crunch to go along with that fudgy texture. But if you just have chocolate chips or you don't want to put chocolate chips on top, you just get your hands in and just throw them on top. So we have added salt in already. But I just like the... the word I'm gonna get. crystalness. Yeah, that, that's perfect description. Like the, what it does it to the up. top, yeah, just like the kind of design adds to the top. It's not going to add like a ton of salt in it. I would bake at 180C, non fan assisted, middle shelf, about 25 minutes. You want a skewer to still be slightly wet when it comes out. Uh, if you're baking fan assisted, I usually drop the temperature by about 15 yeah. degrees, 15 20 degrees. 170 probably. Yes. Works. Well, that's what we, we bake ours at 170. Okay. So let's try it. We'll that. follow, we'll follow you. <laughs> in you go. Into the jet engine we go. It's very loud, our oven. <laughs> Um, we're going to start with 24 seconds. 24 minutes, guys. Yes. 24 we'll seconds, we're going to touch the side. It's a very cool timer. Thanks. I so chose it. So fancy. <laughs> I thought it was like built into the oven. I was like, that is futuristic. That would be cool. So we've cut these into rectangles. You can really do any shape. Fingers, if you will. Fingers. That's the I mean, recipe that's name, is, that called. is what they're called. Uh, I find this a good shape because it's kind of like your classic individual dessert, and it's also a good dipping. We froze them for like 15 minutes, just keeps it uh, nice and cool. It's easier to dip your knife into, and it means that the chocolate glaze, uh, which we just melted, it's literally just oil and chocolate. We let it cool to about 40 degrees Celsius. Very specific again, but it just means it's going to set really quickly when we dip in our frozen brownie. So we just take a knife, we're going to dip it in. And this is the magic bit. Are you ready, guys? So we go in, dip, give it a little shake to the side. One, Whoa. two, give it a dip, dip at the end, dip. And then let the excess just kind of drip. Wow. We're going to use the parchment paper to get rid of any that's on oh the bottom. Oh my goodness. Here. This feels very extravagant. Very extravagant. And then we just lift it onto a silicone mat, like that. Oh my and goodness. now what will happen is that chocolate will set up really quickly. Because we've got the cold brownie, the chocolate will set really quickly. It's a really thin layer. Um, you can also add nuts into this. If you want to do <gasps> some crushed hazelnuts, throw those, throw those in there, adds That's texture. A good idea. Delicious. So we're going to carry on dipping, and then I'm going to test you. I'll do one more dip. Okay. And then we'll see. I'm going to test your dipping skills. Oh, look at that. Isn't it majestic? It really is. So just tip it out, and then again, we'll just give it a little, a little slide here. <laughs> I love this. It's like painting. <laughs> I'm going to sell this. This is my Banksy. Right, I'm going <laughs> to go over here. Not there. All right, you ready? OK. And also, I, I, I dirtied all your parchment paper. You've besmirched it all. <laughs> now, would you ever, like, wipe well, it off? Oh, yeah, you could do it on the bowl. Yeah, 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 totally. Oh my gosh. Totally. I think that's actually the best one. The only problem with it then being more chocolate is you're kind of <laughs> spreading more chocolate around. I mean, listen. Look at that. Could... And what you're really looking for is just to reach the kind of very lip. You almost don't want to see any brownie. Yeah. You want to kind of cover the whole thing. All right, let's carry on. So keep going.
I brought nothing with me other than the spoon. If you're wondering what on earth we're talking about, Matt's brought this amazing spoon, which is specifically designed for quenelling. Rocher. Rocher, rocheting. And I am going to show you, so we made the ganache obviously together, but yesterday I also made his white chocolate vanilla ganache, which if you want the recipe for that, you're just going to have to buy his book, guys. Just as a nicer, sort of lighter alternative, if mm -hmm. you don't want to have a full on chocolate extravaganza. Um, anyway, he has advised me to show you the texture using the quenelle spoon. So here we go. Let's, it's oh. been heated up a little bit. Pressure. Oh my gosh. Ready, Dane? Okay, so it's... Oh! oh no. Keep pulling, keep pulling. Oh no, I dropped, oh. I dropped it at the last minute. Well it's look, okay. it looks a bit like ice cream, but you can see so this was really, really liquid when I put it in the fridge. I was actually a bit worried. I was like, oh, done have I done so it wrong? Because well. I've never made ganache like this with so much cream before. <sighs> but as you can see, the, the gelatin has really firmed it up. It's been in the fridge for 24 hours and it's looking delightful. That was very satisfying, I have to say. Right, I'm going to put that in my mixer and get whisking. And you can see my texture is quite soft as well, but because this has got the chocolate in it, it's going to whisk up quicker. Yeah, let's go there. And we'll keep a really close eye on it. Yeah. No, you don't want to under whip it, but you want it to be just shy of like the perfect texture. And then when you add it into the piping bag and you squeeze the piping bag down, it will just continue to thicken ever so slightly. Gorgeous. Lovely. Right, so now you can, do you want to whip my chocolate? Oh, I'm going to whip the chocolate. Well, do you know what? I do love a whisk. Okay. So, yeah, so it doesn't need sure. much. It doesn't Why need, not? it just needs a kiss of whisking. Okay. It doesn't need much. Oh, it's quite thicker than I thought. Yeah, so yeah. So it shouldn't take too long. Okay, it's thickening. Here we go. You see how that goes from like being very soft to- Like whipped cream. Yeah. Ganaches in piping bags with a very specific nozzle. So this is a 4B. I've actually not got a 4B. <laughs> I've got something else, but this is all we had. Cue dramatic music. We're gonna do the pipe off. <gasps> da -da -da. One nil, Matt, guys. One nil. Listen, it's not over till the fat lady sings. Okay. I've got four left. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to get really blooming good at this, okay? Oh, no. Oh. I should have so we... whipped mine a bit more. Okay, That's let's swap, let's swap. Got. Come on, let's okay. swap. Okay, come on. Here we go. Well, you can see how a piping bag's supposed to be held. <laughs> I mean, two nil. Ready? You ready? I don't know anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it was a little soft, I'll give okay, you that. Okay, thank you. Ooh. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just a little work on your tail and then... Got it. Ooh. Look at that. <laughs> wow. That's so nice. It's really, it is really fudgy, but in a completely different way to our brownies. Mm. Like our brownies are fudgy, but this is different. It's like a moussey fudgy. Yeah, it's moussey. How is that possible? Because it's solid <laughs> and mousse. <laughs> and what do you think about the white chocolate ganache mm. on top then? Well, I really like it, but I mm. want to try. You're going to try the chocolate? Yeah. Oh. Oh, I'll take him. You got him. I'll look after him. Wow. Oh, that's a whole different thing. It's just so decadent. Creamy chocolate topping, like fudgy sweet, because we don't add any sugar to the ganache. You've got the sweetness coming through from the brownie. Thank you so much for joining me and baking with me and showing me this wonderful recipe. Honestly, such a pleasure. I started my journey following your YouTube channel. Oh, so to be it. here is surreal and it's uh, an honour to get to bake for you and teach you how to pipe as well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so lovely having you here. Thank Honestly, you. this is one of the hardest working, loveliest guys in the biz. So if this is the first time you're seeing Matt, then make sure you follow him on all his socials. And also he's just relaunched his website where you can sign up to a subscription and get all of his amazing recipes and new ones constantly, as well as videos to go with them. So he'll teach you how to bake from scratch and make amazing, beautiful things. We're going to be giving um, a couple of books away, books of Matt's and books of ours, signed copies. So all the details will be on Instagram. So go to Instagram, both Cupcake Gemma and Matt. 
will sync up. Thank you for having me. It's nice to meet you all through Thank the you. camera. Thank you Thank for you. having me. No, I was here first. We just I was here first. I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm leaving now, Gemma. All right, well, I'm going to leave with these okay. brownies. <laughs> Later. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh,